At night, when the other engines are tucked away in their sheds, you can still hear the faraway call of an engine's whistle and the clickety-clack of train wheels turning. This is the sound of the mail train. One train is pulled by Thomas and the other by Percy, as the loads are too heavy for one engine to do the work alone. The mail is loaded into freight cars at the harbor, and the engines pull their trains through the silent stations delivering their precious loads. On a clear night, a big shiny moon brightens their journey, but often Thomas and Percy can't even see the stars. But whatever the weather, lamps along the track always light their way. One night, Percy was waiting at the junction. The main line train was late. At last, Henry arrived. Sorry, he puffed. The mail boat from the mainland was delayed. Come on, Percy, said his driver. Let's make up for lost time. Percy puffed along as quickly as he could, but the sun was already rising as he finished his work. Never mind, thought Percy. It's nice to be up and about when it's the start of a new day and there's no one else around. Percy was not alone for long. Bother, said Percy. It's that dizzy thing, Harold. Good morning, word Harold. I always said railways were out of date. But you're so slow with the mail. You should give everyone their stamps back. Percy was too tired to explain. Bird brain, he muttered. Good morning, Percy, called Duck. You're up early this morning. No, you're wrong, sighed Percy. I'm back, tired and late. He rolled into the shed and fell asleep almost before his buffers touched the bar. His driver decided to set off early that evening. Thomas was waiting at the station. Thank goodness I have a chance to speak to you. Driver says that the person in charge of the mail has complained to Sir Topham Hatt about the delay last night. But that wasn't my fault, replied Percy. I know, said Thomas, and so does Sir Topham Hatt. But this mail person wouldn't listen. Tonight we'll just have to be quicker than ever before. The engines were just leaving when they heard a familiar buzzing. I say, you two, there's news flying about. Where? puffed Percy crossly. All over the place. They're going to scrap the mail train and use me instead. Wings work wonders, you know. Always. Rubbish, huffed Thomas. That night, everything ran like clockwork. Thomas and Percy steamed through the stations, making good time everywhere they went. At a station, Thomas noticed a man looking cold and worried. He had missed his train home. We can give you a ride, said Thomas's driver, but it will be rather uncomfortable. Thank you, said the man. Anything's better than sitting here. The next afternoon, Percy passed the airfield and saw Harold. Hello, lazy wings. Are you too tired to fly today? The wind's too strong, grumbled Harold. I've been grounded. You need rails, laughed Percy. They work wonders, you know, always. That night, Sir Topham Hatt showed the two engines a letter. It was from the man who missed his train. He thinks you are both splendid, and everyone says that the mail train is the pride of the line. 